Hey everyone, this is Sally Mae with Silhouette Secrets Plus, and today I have a quick video to share you a really super easy project that you can do in Silhouette Studio that can add a little bit of unique flair to your gift bags. Have you ever seen a custom gift bag topper? I was shown how to create these at an event by hand cutting a few years back, but it is so easy to create in the Silhouette Studio software. Here's a look at my close-ups of the bags that I created for this week's newsletter. And make sure to check out the links in the description below for additional information. This is the free file. The kit is a free file from Knitwit Collections this month. But I'll also have a link where you can get it after this month as well. So let's take a look at Silhouette Studio. Here is a look at my working file in the software that I did do the print and cut from. So you can see that my page is set up as a print and cut. I'm going to come over here to a new design tab where I'm going to show you how you can make your own base for this custom gift bag topper and then you can customize it however you like. You can see I added elements here at the bottom to print and cut so then I could do the layering that you see here in this photo. I'm going to come over here to this new design mat and I'm simply going to use the drawing tool on the left hand side and grab the draw uh, rectangle tool. I'm going to hold my shift key down because I want to draw a perfect square. So I'm going to just draw a perfect square. It does not have to be the correct size. And then I'm going to come up here to the quick access toolbar. And if your square is not perfect, you can click the unlock to unlock that. So you can change both. Mine is perfect. So I'm just going to hit type in six, highlight the number, type in six, hit enter, and it's going to change to a six by six square. Now keep in mind that the size of your actual gift bag topper and the hole in the middle may vary if you have a larger gift bag or even a smaller gift bag. So keep that in mind. This is about a medium size. Next, I'm going to come over here again and grab the draw rectangle tool, or you can make a copy and I'm just gonna draw a skinny rectangle. And then I can come up here to the quick access toolbar and unlock the aspect ratio. And then I'm going to change this width to three and the height to 0.375. And now I have the slot where the gift bag handles are going to come through. I'm going to left click and drag across both of those and then use the center option in the top quick access toolbar to center that right in the middle. Now I want to punch this little rectangle out of the large square. So I am going to right click and I'm going to choose make compound path. However, I'm going to fill this with color so I can demonstrate for you what the compound path actually does. Right now I have two shapes. And if I fill this with color, my square is, is selected, so I'm going to click on blue. And then I'm going to click on that skinny rectangle and let's fill it with yellow. So depending on your screen, this might look purple too. Um, so currently I have a skinny rectangle on top of the large square, two objects. I'm going to left click and drag across both of those to select them and right click and choose make compound path. When I do that, it's going to punch the skinny rectangle out of the square. And now it is combined and it is one design, one layer. So I'm gonna go ahead and take the fill color out of that again so we have an empty square. And then I'm going to open the file, the folder where I have these files saved. And what I want to do is I am going to grab this file right here, this pattern, and I'm going to drag it carefully into the square. So first I'm gonna get this positioned on the screen so that you can see everything. And then this is just from my computer folder where I have the files saved. I have my square is selected and I'm just simply going to left click, drag this over onto my design mat and do not let go of the mouse until after the pattern has filled your shape. If you drag it and drop it too quick, you will end up with a little white square that you saw up here, that little white square. If that little white square, if you do it too fast, it will stay there and you have to close and reopen your software in order to get rid of it. So now I have this 
file. This is the base for my gift bag topper. And you can add all kinds of different things on top of it to create with. Um, the next thing I am going to do is I will create a score line. So I'm gonna come over here to the left-hand side for a draw line. And then I'm simply going to left click and hold my shift key down so it draws a perfect line and click again. Now I don't want my score line to go completely all the way through. I don't like the score line to actually cut the edge of the paper. Uh, when I have that, it is currently a red line, straight line. I'm going to change this to a dashed line and I'm gonna use the large dash. And now I have my score line. So what I can do is Control C, Control V, click off, click back on, Control C, Control V, and I can make a copy and move it approximately where I want it over here on the right side. I'm gonna hold my Shift key down with this one selected and click on the one on the left-hand side, then use my Align tools and Align Middle, and then I'm going to Control G to group them or right-click and choose Group. Now I can select Left click, drag across my square and my score line, and I can choose the center option, and it moved just a little bit. So let me undo that, and I'm actually going to move this a little bit different so you can see it more on the screen. So I'm going to actually, in this case, I can go ahead and align middle, that moves it a little bit, and then, or align center, and then align middle. And now I have my score line. Right click and choose group. So now I have my base completed for my gift bag topper. When you go to print and cut, you can go up here, turn on the registration marks, and then make sure that your gift bag topper and any other designs that you add into it is outside of the crosshatched area of your print and cut, and you can fill the page with all kinds of designs that you want to add to this. So here's a look at the finished project that I did Make sure to check out the links in the video description below. I do have a step-by-step -step print and cut class that will set you up for success and provide you with troubleshooting tips as well on my Teachable site. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. Thanks for watching and have a great day.